Hello and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. Hope all of our viewers and listeners had a very Merry Christmas. Enjoyed the racing, the top quality racing over the Christmas period. Leftovers have all gone out of our fridges, but the party food starting to come in ahead of the new year. We've got some racing on Saturday that we're going to be looking at. We'll also be looking at New Year's Day and getting the panel's uh, opinions on some of the racing on Monday because there's top quality action at Cheltenham. But on today's show, it's mainly Newbury where we've got five races. Haydock, we're covering one race from there and two races at Taunton. Very rarely do we cover Taunton on the postcast. Nice to take a trip there. Let's quickly go through our panel today. I've got assistant betting editor Graham Robway. We've got our Irish handicapper Johnny Pearson. And from Unibet, as always, we have Ed Nixon. Ed, I'll start with you. How was your Christmas? It was good. I went to Boxing Day racing at Aintree, which was uh, a first time they've had that meeting. I was counting all the different race courses I've been to on Boxing Day. Fontwell, <laughs> Weatherby, uh, Aintree now, Kempton, Chepstow. I mean, there's loads in, in the past. But um, yeah, Aintree was, it was quiet, but it, it, uh, it was a good meeting. Good meeting. Absolutely. And who was your, the best performance over the Christmas period for you, Ed? LA Francais, I think, and yeah. I mean that's an un- unbelievable performance um, for a novice. Jumped so well. Um, time of the race was was really good, relatively speaking, to the King George. Just took your breath away, didn't it? We watched it on the screen, so we were watching it with a few trainers, and I mean they they were mightily impressed with the way that uh, he just jumped round Kempton as if it was nothing. Yeah, absolutely, it was so impressive. Graham Robby, how was your Christmas, and who was your favourite performance over the period? Hi Sam. Yeah, it was it was a good uh, Christmas period. Really enjoyed it. Uh, we've had a lot of races, uh, and, and we we had some really good stuff. Uh, Ed's already obviously stolen the standout performance <laughs> of the whole period. I think everyone would uh, agree that Ile Francais looked something special, didn't he? So let's hope we see a bit more of him in Britain because I think they are talking about the French Gold Cup, aren't they, Sam? As the the number one target for him this season, but he will be back for the King George next year, hopefully. Reminds me of all years gone by. Horses like the Fellow and Algan and First Gold always used to come over and plunder that big prize from Francois Dumont's yard. And now, of course, Noel George bringing over this one. Real superstar. But um, apart from him, obviously, Nassalam was, was outstanding, wasn't he? He was absolutely brilliant in the Welsh Grand National. It was hot, deep mud, and he obviously loves it like that. So, uh, seeing as Ed stolen the away France, I'll go for Nassalam as the number one performance of the Christmas period, Sam. Absolutely. A 34-length winner of the Welsh Grand National. It was so impressive. I know the Moors had a really good party that evening after Editor Jeet did the business over at Kempton as well. And Johnny Pearson, our, our man, our Irish handicap, I'm sure your performance has got to come from Ireland, does not it? Yeah, I Sam. Yeah, the, the stand-up performance, while the other two we mentioned are very good, is how can you look past Galloping the Champs yesterday? He's mm. beaten a good field by a very, very long way. The time of the race is decent and... I'll be very surprised if anything's good enough to beat him in the Gold Cup. Mm, he was so, so good. I was also impressed with Marine Nationale, who's now a odds-on favourite for the Arkle. So, some top quality performances. Let us know down in the comments who your favourite performance was over the Christmas period. And as always, do like, share and subscribe. Let's get into the action then, and we kick things off at Newbury. We've got five races to cover. The highlight there is going to be the Chalo Hurdle at 3 o'clock, but we start off with the 115 there, which is a handicap chase just over two miles, where Mortador <laughs> tops the market of Unibet at 15-8. to eight. Guys 4-1. to one. The Russian Doyen is 9-2. to Isar Derry is 9-2. to two. Rich Hill is 11-2. to two. And the outside of the fielders are Follet at 14 to one currently all of these prices are correct at the time of recording i must add and ed nicholson kicks off with a winner well my attention was drawn to venetia williams's Mar- uh, Marta Marta tour but um it's, it's a bit short for me it's, it's right about seven to four now i think um and also although relatively unexposed in the uk has had seven runs had 13 races in france uh, winning in heavy, which is quite interesting at uh, Oito. I don't know what the going is going to be at Newbury. It's, it's good to soft at the moment, but um, keep an eye on, on the going. Obviously, very important when you when you're placing a bet. And Venetia Williams, I mean, December's her month, isn't it? She she has more winners in December during her career than than any other month. Nineteen percent success rate in that month. Um, but um, I, I'm going to go for Desert Dairy. Uh, Gary Moore, you've already mentioned what a fantastic Christmas he had. 
Um, his forces are in great form, as we all know. Uh, but he's, it, I think the last 14 days, he's had eight winners from 42 runners, which is 19%. But his, his last few runners have been 1-1-1-2, one, 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 uh, are at a four and a winner. Um, so he's, I mean, he's, he's in cracking form recently in terms of, of his horses and how they're doing today uh, at the moment. Uh, and Dose Dairy, I thought ran really well last time out. It, it was a long time ago, um, relatively speaking, uh, but has got form on the book, uh, has run well with time off as well in the past. Uh, Nahulhan's taken the ride. Obviously, he, his last winner was uh, was the uh, the King George, uh, sorry, was uh, the Desert Orchid Chase winner, uh, a grade two. So he's in tr- tr- uh, tremendous form. I just thought that Dose Dairy travelled so well last time out at uh, Hunting, I think it was, um, when he looked like the winner all the way around, going going in behind the runners, pulling early on as well. Still had enough uh, fuel in the tank at the end to take the lead at the last, and was just outgunned in the closing stages. Uh, as long as he's you know he's there or thereabouts in the race, uh, I should think you have to be quite quite well up there at Newbury. Um, I, I think I think I'll take a lot of beating, and around about eleven to two, I thought it was a decent bet. Yeah, it's our dairy. And Nar Hulan still keeps his £3 claim for a few more days, which will come in handy in a race like this. Johnny Pearson, uh, Ed's mentioned there about Venetia Williams and the fact that December's her month. But it seems to be, since the start of the jump season, every month and every weekend seems to be her. She seems to bang in winners left, right and centre. Is that the one to beat? Well, I'm, I, I, or possibly, but I mean, I'm not... A f- keen on the fact that he ran just nine days ago that's that's a big negative in my book you know these races can take a lot out of a horse and i'm going to make a brave decision and go with another cliff or a cliff horse of mine in guy for nigel twist and davis he obviously is a bit disappointing at taunton last time but he hit the rail became a bit unbalanced and a few excuses can be made but if you go back through his three runs before that you know two at cheltenham and winning at Fontwell. if you ignore the last run he's dropping back down and class again and I think he could finally get another win under his belt for all he's been running well on the whole this season Absolutely, Guy's been a bit of a cliff horse for myself as well. Graham Robway are we going to have a, a third different selection in this race? Yeah I thought it was tricky enough Sam um, when in doubt I'd just go with Venetia I think uh, you know, <laughs> she, she can't do much wrong can she so this was um, Started off, he was running off a mark of 124 over hurdles. I think he's taken a bit of time to really take to it. I bet he looked better than ever, um, as Johnny said, quite recently at, at the track. Over course and distance, chasing their own metal on. He was running in first-time cheat piece there. I think they've discarded those this time, which, um, you know, I quite like it when the headgear goes off sometimes. I know people like my headgear goes on, but I tend to be a bit the opposite. So, um yeah, yeah, it's tricky enough, Sam, but I think the fab's the right fab. Okay, Mortador for Graham Robway in the opening race that we preview there at Newbury. The 150 is a handicap hurdle over two and a half miles. It's a class two event. Get a tonic currently tops the market at 15 to 8. Steel and March, 100 to 30. Irish Hill, 4 to 1. Rambo T is 7 to 1. Silent Revolution is 15 to 2. And Now or Never is 8 to 1. Graham Robway, this is a, a competitive race looking at the price, so you can make a case for plenty in here. Who are you going to be making a case for? A quite a fancy one in this, Sam. Didn't think this was anywhere near as tricky. Rambo T is the one that I like. Um, Ollie Murphy and James Bowen is booked to ride. Sean Bowen's been riding this horse recently. Um, last time out, there was a bit of money about for Rambo T um, at, at the track, but he definitely didn't stay three miles that day. Um, he was well punted um, in from 15 to 2 into 7 on track, I think it was. There was a bit of money for him uh, earlier in the day as well. Um, as I say, didn't get three miles. But his previous run, he had uh, finished third in a red-hot handicap at Cheltenham, a big, big field behind Pinnacle Peak. I think a reproduction of that form might be uh, enough to win this race, Sam. Um, he's running off uh, one pound higher than Cheltenham. Same mark as when he ran here last time, and the money came for him. So I'm more than happy to give Rambo T another chance now that he's back down in trip because he didn't stay last time. Rambo T for Mr. Rodway. Ed Nixon, who are you with? Well, I've got a really strong fancy as well in this race. Um, Steeler March, Nicky Henderson. Nicky Henderson has got such a good record. At Newbury, as we all know, his handicap chasers, not so much so. You're actually this century if you had a pound on every horse that uh, Nicky sent over chases at, 
at Newby, you're losing 75 quid this century. Uh, but over hurdles, you'd be winning uh, 53 pounds. Uh, he's, he's won 44 of his 291 handicap hurdles this century at Newbury. He always likes to have a winner at the course, as we all know. And Steeler March just looks like a typically improving handicap hurdler uh, for the Master of Seven Barrows. It's actually a good story about this horse. Um, the, the year, not 2022, the uh, Queen's Platinum Jubilee year, the 4th of June, when all the jockeys who had ridden for the Queen kind of went to new went to uh, Epsom and uh, did that wonderful picture. I don't know if you saw it, all wearing the royal colours. Well, Nico de Boinville obviously has ridden winners for the Queen, uh, but he wasn't there. And the reason he wasn't there is he went to Worcester to ride this horse, Steel of March. It had been a plan for the whole year for uh, Nick Henderson to, to run the Queen's Steel of March in this race uh, at Worcester and to win it on, on what was uh, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Day. And it did do, it won at 7-2. to two. So a great plan. And, and Nicky says that's one of his biggest uh, one of his b- biggest successes of the season. Uh, but this horse is rated 132 now, is it? And uh, it's been running really well over the last few few years. It's, uh, it's an eight-year-old now. Um, this is this is his trip, two and a half miles. Nicky's horse are in great form. He's had four winners of his last eight runners. Um, and we know one of those, the other ones should have won as well. Um, and I just think he's got a, a fantastic chance in this race. Uh, he's four from 11 over hurdles himself, Steeler March. Uh, and I, I just think the race will be run to suit. And I wouldn't be surprised if they've, they've kind of looked at this race from a long way out as well to get this horse kind of running in, in, in the run-up to, to what would possibly be a, a race at, uh, at Cheltenham later on in the year or later on in the season. There we go. A winner for His Majesty ahead of the New Year. Steel of March at 130 for Ed Nicholson. And Johnny Pearson, another race. Surely not three different selections again, are we? Uh, unfortunately so. <laughs> I'm going to give another chance to Irish Hill. Obviously very disappointing last time at Newbury, but I think that can be forgiven. It was hard to see entirely what went on with all the fog, but the ground was quite tacky that day and it may not have suited but you know he's got they've gone for the blinkers first time suggesting he wasn't you know maybe a bit lit up who knows and I think he should give a much much better performance on that day the handicap is quick enough to drop him from you know he had he was 134 in March so four runs since and he's back down to 127 and he won off the mark of 128 uh, in February so I think you know, it's factoring all that in, he should be good enough to, to get his head in front again, provided he is on song and last time was just a blip. Absolutely, Irish Hill, yeah, it's a, a fair old price in here and we've got three different selections for that race there. We probably end up having three different selections for this next race, the 225 at Newbury, which is the Mandarin handicap chase over three and a quarter miles, where Surrey Quest currently tops the market at 9 to 2 of Uni at Laskinen's 11 to 2. Atlanta Brave is also 11 to 2. Fantasticat is 6 to 1. Bow to Greatness, 7 to 1. Certainly Red, uh, yes indeed. Shanty Alley will 10 to 1. We're looking at bigger bar these. Ed Nicholson, we've got an extra place here, have we? We have, as long as there are eight runners or more, which looks likely, mm. uh, there will be an extra place in this uh, race. The race that um, punters will know very well. It's a good race, um, this particular contest. Um, and there's plenty of opportunities to back a horse here with those extra plays uh, on offer. It really is a competitive handicap, isn't it? As you would expect for the prize money. Um, my, my eye was drawn, well, it wasn't actually drawn. I actually had to go quite quite in depth to find a selection here because it was competitive but I, I like Bow to great about uh, to greatness um in this got some really good form and my worry was the trainer stats on this horse because uh trainer is not in particularly great form uh he's only got nine percent success rate strike rate for the last 14 days uh, has been pulling but uh, this particular horse goes well really fresh looking at his record over the years uh, 200, 226 days off, he came second, beating a short head when rated 130. Before that, 260 days off when he, he fell in his maiden at Foss Lass. I watched that race before the show again, and he, he was going really well when he fell. He, he might not have won. There was a, another horse, Paul Nichols, I think, going particularly well. But he, he, I think he would, have, he would have given that one a race. So the horse obviously can, can run well when fresh, uh, which is good because he's been off the track for, for, uh, for, for some time. Um, and he's also got the form in the book. He's run really well. He, it was good enough, they thought, to run at the Cheltenham Festival in the Magnus Plate, uh, where he was 100 to 1 shot, but ran midway through the pack. Uh, previously finished second at uh, Aintree. Sorry, then went on to finish second at Aintree in a, in a good race. And 
when you watch him run, he, he always travels smoothly through his races. A uh, bit unlucky at Aintree, I thought. The last fence, he kind of didn't hit it right and great jump on the inside by another horse managed to get him up on the line. Uh, so I just thought, I thought Boat, uh, Bout of Greatness had a great deal going for him. My, my only concern was the trainer's stats, and I'm a great one for trainer's stats. I like to, to back a trainer in form. Uh, but I think uh, given his first time uh, record, or certainly record after a long time off, I thought uh, Bout of Greatness was was worth a was worth a, a bet here with the extra place with Unibet. 13-2 to two has been backed, I, I noticed mm. as well. I do like it when Ben Pauling's especially handicappers, are, are, are backs. Um, and I thought it was interesting as this horse hadn't had a run as well. So I'm hoping that he's ready to go. He was being, he was 8-1 to one when we opened betting. He's now 13-2. to two. OK, there we go. Yeah, bow to greatness. Uh, a winner for His Majesty the King in the 150 at Newbury and a winner for the former King of the Jungle in the 225 at Newbury, Fred Nicholson there with Harry Redknapp owning bow to greatness. Johnny Pearson, who are you going to be with in the Mandarin? I'm really keen on Atlanta Brave for Kerry Lee. I think this will be his third chase start. You know, first one he needed. He stepped up and trip last time at Exeter. It was a bit too far back, but staying really strongly all the way to the line and not beaten far in the end. What was a definitely a career best performance. And I expect him to improve even further in his third chase start now. A little bit further and trip this race as well. Should should really suit his, his staying powers, and I think at the prices is for well, every horse in this race you can back at the prices. You know they're all they're all each way opportunities, but I think he's the one who's really going to improve and relish relish the the test here. And for me, is I really like him and think he'll win. Yeah, okay, Atlanta Brave. Yeah, like I say, the four places with Uni Bet are going to come in handy for a lot of punters here. Um, so, he's just to let let punters know he he has been at the other one for support early doors six okay. into five. A bit of money. Yeah. yeah, some money for two of the selections there. W- will there be money for Graham Robway's selection? Who may that be? Yeah, I, I'm with Ed. Yeah, I think that Bout of Greatness is going to win this for for Ferrari. Um, <laughs> ben Pauling uh, won this race 2015, I think it was 16, one of those years. We've always called Silver Grove. And then uh, he had Nesta Park finish second in it, I think, three years ago. And Nesta Park finished second in it two years ago. So. It's a race that he definitely likes. I actually checked his stable tour, the Racing Post, to see if he had pinpointed this race for to Greatness, but he actually said the Coral Gold Cup was the big target. <laughs> so I don't know what went wrong, but maybe uh, he just couldn't quite get him right in time for that race. But he's obviously found another big race first time up for him at Newbury. As Ed says, he's got a really good record when fresh. He comes in off top way. He's got a bit of a class angle, hasn't he? And he's still unexposed at the distance because he's only had one run over this sort of trip and like ed said that was an absolute cracker when he was beaten by midnight river at aintree if he can come back to anywhere near that that sort of form he's going to be very hard to beat first time out and i'm fairly certain that ben pauling's laid him out because he likes to win this race so i'm quite confident here on Ari's horse bout of greatness it might it go. might be sam that um the reason why bout of greatness didn't run in the coral gold cup is that harry had another runner didn't he he had uh, shake out so, yeah, yeah, good point. Fair point. It, yeah. it, ran, it ran a really nice race. Well, shake him up Harry, for a long way in that <laughs> Coral World Cup, I remember, um, right on the front end. Mm. Let's move on then to the highlight on the card at Newbury, the three o'clock, which is the Chalow Novices Hurdle, Grade 1 contest over two and a half miles. We've got some exciting novices here with Will Mount top in the market around six to four of Unibet. Captain Teague's 130. Johnny Who is five to one. Look Away six to one. Farnog is eight to one. Masaccio is 12 to one. Harry Sauce, the jukebox man, is 16 to one. And we're looking at much bigger prices about the others in this field. Don't know whether you've managed to speak to the traders at all, um, Ed, with regards to this, but Will Mount, do you think Will Mount could be weak on the day or do you think this is going to be well punted? Yeah, not spoken to Nicky. Uh, he was not very well actually over on the 27th. He didn't even get to Kempton, so um, which is unusual for him. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the blog will be up later on today, though. So so we will have all the news from Seven Barriers. Do do go on to Unibet.co.uk or at Unibet Racing for the blog from Nicky and from Nico. Definitely worth doing when he's got runners at Newbury, as mentioned earlier on. He, he does target that track. Um, I think it's one of his best tracks for strike rates in the country. Um, he does have a lot of runners there as well, um, obviously being near to seven barriers. But uh, yeah, the, the blogs will be up later on today. I, I personally thought Will Mount might be weak mm. for the betting. Um, speed ratings, I, I, I 
my own, the speed ratings I've got, um, they're not my own, but uh, that I've got, suggest that that wasn't particularly a, a high speed figure for his, for his for a race at Newbury, a novice race at Newbury that he won. Um, doesn't mean he's not a good horse, because obviously he won really easily by 13 lengths or so. But um, I'm, I'm, it wasn't. I'm just quite interested in a couple of others in in, in the uh, in the contest. He, and although Nicky does extremely well with his novice hurdles, I had a look at his shallow hurdle victories. Or his, he's only had 12 runners this century in the shallow hurdle. Two of them have won. Um, Champ was the latest to win. He has ridden. He has. He tends to, as you would expect, over two and a half miles to have his you know horses that are going to be better over staying distances and maybe fences over later in their career. So um, you know, Finian's Rainbow. I think was placed in this race and so he does he does throw a good horse in the race but it, it, I, I was surprised I thought he might he might have had more good horses in this race over the years and he doesn't seem to have had uh, Will Man obviously everyone been talking about him being a you know Cheltenham Festival winner this is a top race in his own right as we as we know uh, but there are two horses here that I like the look of um, one of the horses I like to look at was uh, Look Away who is going to get the run of the race, should lead, um, and his performance in the Unibet Greatwood Hurdle was actually really very good indeed when you look at it. Probably his best, well, definitely his best run, even though he got beaten into second. Um, I watched the replay a couple of times this morning and actually couldn't believe, you know, how he kept on going and how he ran up the hill. Iberica Lord came and, and beat him, but two winners are in behind him. Lucia, who won a very competitive handicap over Christmas, and Sonny Gino, who, who won a, an equally competitive race at uh, at Aintree, and uh, Nimi and Lee, Lyon in behind those, who was deemed good enough to have a, an entry in the uh, the Grade One Christmas Hurdle. So it's probably very strong form. In fact, the Unibet Grade One is always great form. Um, and I, I thought Look Away would would get the run of the race. He's, he's, by my speedometers, he's, he's going to lead, um, and he's he's won over two and a half miles already. Um, albeit a, a very easy win at Utoxeter um, against lesser horses. But um, his rating puts him there or thereabouts as well. I know these horses aren't handicap ratings, but when you look at the 136 that he, he is at now, that's that's a decent rating in this in this field. Um, and I, I thought he got an exceptional chance. Um, Neil King is the trainer. If he was trained by one of the other kind of better-known trainers, I know everyone says this, but I'm sure he'd be a shorter price than 6-1. to one. Um, the other one that I looked at, uh, and uh, so look away is going to be my each way selection, but I love Captain Teague. Captain Teague is such a beautiful big horse who's got chasing already stamped upon him. Um, he won um, the Unibet Persian War at Chepstow, and um, I spoke to his owner after that race, and, and they, they really like him. It, they ran him in, in the uh, the bumper at, um, at, uh, at Aintree when he was third, and then he made his hurdling debut in the Persian Unibet, uh, the Unibet Persian War, uh, following the line of Tyne Hill, he did exactly the same thing. Um, but they, they said he probably isn't a Cheltenham horse, and, and they, they were looking forward to running him in these sort of races. So this race was one of the races they mentioned. And I thought he ran a good enough race at Cheltenham when he got beaten by uh, by uh, Manila, um, and Manila Missile. Um, I just thought he, he, he's worth another chance. He had a £5 penalty that day. The time of the race was pretty good. Four seconds faster than the competitive handicap that opened the card. Um, so Captain Teague would be a, a viable alternative. I think he's a quite a big price as well, around about 7-2. to two. If if he had won that race at Cheltenham, or if the other horse hadn't been in the field, he, he would be, he'd be favourite for this race. And it's a race, this race is a race that Nichols loves to run. Hermes Allen... Um, won this race having won the race that Captain T came second in. So, yeah, Captain T and Look Away are two horses that I would both think would, would beat Will Mount. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Captain Teague and Look Away, the two in there. And Captain Teague, Graham, Rob, by, um Ed's mentioned there about Hermes LM recently winning this race, but you've also got Brave Man's Game, who's won it in, in recent years. So, look, Nichols loves to send a good horse here and potentially a good future chaser as well. Is that what we're looking at with probably Captain T? Yeah, he definitely built for chasing, isn't he? I don't think that, that he's going to be winning um, hurdle races at Cheltenham anyway, but if he is going to win a grade one over hurdles, it, it might well be this one, Sam, might it? And um, I do wonder if time might show that he had quite a difficult task last time out, trying to give £5 to the winner, Manila Missile, who was quite a big price, but he'd run some really quick sectionals when he won at uh, Chepstow on his previous outing, and obviously he's bringing the 
champion bumper form into it, isn't he, from last season. He was impressive in that Persian War, Captain Teague. He's got the best form in the race, and I think I think he'll be he'll be the one that, that I'll be backing ahead of Wheelmount because Wheelmount's a short old price. But he is interesting, Wheelmount. I mean, he is, without doubt, the most exciting horse in the race. If there's a superstar in this Persian War, it probably is wheel mount um ed's right the time was was not very good uh when he won at newbury first time up over hurdles but he did finish off with some really fast sectional times i mean he he ran three of the last four furlongs sub 14 seconds he was two more than two seconds faster than the second over the last half mile and he ran the quickest furlong on that entire card by 0.8 seconds which you're talking about three and a half lengths over a furlong so he has got an awful lot of natural pace and ability there, Will Mount, um, and he's going up four furlongs in trip, so he's open to any amount of improvement. The problem is, of course, he's priced up like he's already going to make that improvement, and he hasn't yet shown it on the track. Mm. So at the prices, I'll be backing Captain T because I think he's the better value bet, but I'm most excited to see Will Mount run here, Sam. I think he's a very exciting prospect. I completely agree. That's exactly how I looked at the race. I think Wilmot could be really exciting. I'm hoping he is a little bit special, but I'll be taking Captain Teague against him. Um, I think it's definitely worth giving Captain Teague another chance. And Johnny Pearson. We haven't said much about Johnny who, Johnny Pearson. What, what are the thoughts there? I mean, he's, he's one of those who's very unknown, but he's a he's a very promising prospect. You know, he's three mm-hmm. from three. It's hard to say he's done anything wrong. And he could he could be very good. But he still needs to to prove that he's up to higher levels than what he's achieved today. Um, the one the one you missed out from the last three winners for Paul Nichols of the last three years was Stage Star, who of obviously course. was very very impressive at Cheltenham earlier this year, and wouldn't be wouldn't be surprised to see him win at the festival either. Um, yeah, so Paul Nichols won the race for the last three years. Captain Teague's got the best form on offer, and for me, is very much the most likely winner of the race. It'll also be, be interesting to see how Farnoge does his, his other runner in the race. I mean, it's clearly a race he targets and has done for the last few years. You know, they, his other runner's got a bit to prove, but it wouldn't be a surprise, su- surprise to see that. Um, Will Mann, obviously done nothing wrong, but beaten much lesser quality fields than this and Captain Teague has done. And Captain Teague really should should be winning this. Yeah, I learnt, there's a, a four votes there for Captain Teague. There's a few each way there, Farnog, and obviously Ed putting up look away as well in the Chalo. But yeah, a, a full house there for Captain Teague. Can he go and beat Wilmount in the Chalo? The final race though at Newbury is the 335, which is a novices limited handicap chase. Class 3 event over two mile, six and a half furlongs. Walking on air, currently the favourite, 130. Passing Nell, uh, passing well is seven to two. Golden Sun is four to one. Bally Campus is nine to two. Labit Foras is eight to one. Henry's friend nine to one. Neon Moon, ten to one, and eleven to one is Moon Hunter in the field. Ah, oh, walking on air. This horse here, he was touted to be a really, really smart horse. It hasn't quite come together, Ed, has it? But look, his favourite here. Can he get a win on the board in this race? I'd be looking to take him on. As I said earlier, on, he hasn't got great record in, in, in handicap chases, with, relatively speaking, when you look at his other records with other races at Newbury. Doesn't mean walking in there can't win, obviously. But um, he's also had his problems. And as you quite rightly said, they, they did think he was going to be a very good horse in his earlier career. And he hasn't. He's been had his injuries. He's, he hasn't progressed. And it's a competitive handicap. You know, the, the eight runners, 130 to 11 to 1 indicates how competitive a race it is i mean even the bottom horse neon neon lot moon at 11 to 1 would have a decent chance. actually i should mention that neon uh neon moon is is was bred by a, uh, a friend of unibet's uh cole uh, mcdonald who's uh whose brother works for, for unibet a train director and uh, they bred the horse and the the mayor um, hidden horizons who won the ulster grand national unfortunately passed away at christmas uh, age 17 so Commiserations to uh, the McDonald family, but uh, she bred a good one in uh, in Neo Moon, who's won plenty of races. Uh, but uh, on this occasion, I- I'm going to go for Bally Camus, a horse who's only had one race over fences, um, won one of his three points of points, has only had uh, won 14 races in his whole career. I was at Chepstow on the 9th of December when he won that race, and 
he battled. He just kept on finding. Uh, he didn't jump very well. As you would, well, that's a bit unfair. He jumped adequately, but as you would expect for a novice, he, he wasn't uh, he, he wasn't fluent. So he can improve his jumping. Uh, the extra distance will 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 suit, I think. Um, and uh, he's sure to 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 to, to run a race. Uh, got a good speed ratings on my figures that I've got would put him right there just on that one run um, at Chepstow. He can only improve. Um, he has got good form at Newbury as well. He's had two previous runs at Newbury, as far as I can see. Second in a, um, in a bumper and, and won a hurdle race when he absolutely cruised through the race. The track will suit, you would expect, as, 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 as he's won there. He's only going to get better. He's always going to be a chaser. Um, I think he's a good bet at around about 9-2. to two. Okay, Bally Kammer, Chef, the Nod, Twist and Davies Yard there in form as well, 9-2 to two currently with Unibet. Johnny Pearson, who for you in the final race at Newbury? I'm agreeing with Ed. I think Barry Camus will finish with his, head, with his head in front again. He was very impressive winning at Chepstow, as Ed said. He just kept on fighting for pressure. His jumping wasn't as slick as it could be, as you'd expect from, from an obvious, and that should, and well, hopefully that'll improve here. I think he can go on to win again. The, the other one that I'm sort of interested by would be passing well. You know, he did, did win well last time out at Lingford, beating Heva Rose, who I thought had a great chance that day. And Obviously, Gavin Sheehan can do no wrong at the moment. So, it's, so that you know, that is one that also also catches the eye. On on, my, on racing post ratings, Bally Camus is the one to beat, and he should improve further on on what he did last time out. Absolutely, yeah. Look, Bally Camus, I'd I'd agree with this as well. It wouldn't be a strong selection for me, but I think Bally Camus could be the one to beat. Graham Robway, it can't be two races in a row. We've got a full house, can it? <laughs> No, Sam, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm really strong on one here. Yeah, I'm really strong on Golden Sun. <laughs> I really fancy Golden Sun. Um, this horse was uh, was a grade two winner over hurdles in France. He was placed in a grade one in France. All of his form in France, he wore a tongue tie. And he came over to Britain trained by Paul Nichols. And by all accounts, he'd only had one gallop before he turned up. Uh, for his first run at Warwick and he ran a stormer to be beaten by the classy Oroco who obviously won at Cheltenham Festival last season without the tongue strap on that day I thought he'd definitely improved for the run so did many others when he went, turned up at Aintree last time out he went off odds on and was pulled up showed absolutely nothing but again he went without the tongue tie that day like I say if you go back look at all of his best form in France all in graded races tongue tie, tongue tie, tongue tie what turns up today? first run in a handicap tongue tie so i think you're going to see a massively improved performance from this golden sun off top weight 139 if he can bring his graded class form into this handicap he should be far too good for them and i think he will with that tongue strap back on sam so very strong and golden sun for me i could tell with the voice there graham robway very strong on golden sun there <laughs> five to one there's so a not bad price this golden sun and it could be a nice double for Paul Nichols and Harry Cobden in the final two races there at Newbury. So there we go, five races from Newbury done and dusted. We'll be back shortly after this with Haydock and Taunton. I want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland and around the globe? And get a chance to win even bigger with three uni boosts every day on any horses you want. Uni bet, you're on. Welcome back to the second part of the Racing Post cast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Uni Bet, Sam Hart, Graham Robway, Johnny Pearson, and Ed Nicholson, spinning you through Saturday's action on ITV. We've got one race from Haydock. To look at, and it's the 125 there, which is a handicap chase class two event over three and a half miles. Unibet currently have collector's items as the seven to four favourite, four to skew and Fantasticas, uh, Annie Street nine to two, Omar Moretti is 11 to two, and Robin Zone is 11 to one. Ed, there is an offer on this race with money back if second, is that correct? That is correct, money back uh, if your selection comes second. Please do check the terms and conditions when you're placing the bet, and that will be available from 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. There we go. So 9 a.m. Saturday morning, you can get that available. Money back a second. Like Ed says, do check the terms and conditions there. Graham Robway, I'll start with you. Who's going to win this one sole race at Haydock we're covering? 
Yeah, difficult, isn't it? Uh, let's hope it goes ahead, Sam, because it's really heavy ground, isn't it, at Haydock, and uh, plenty of rain around. Uh, I wondered if this might be one for the Twister team. Fantasticas was obviously second last time out, wasn't he, behind? Was it Hidden Heroics, I think, was the horse in that race at Ludlow. I backed one out of that race the other day. I don't remember what it's called now. Oh, no, sorry, Lascalan. He's running in the... Um, he's also in the Mandarin, isn't he, uh, at Newbury. I think he's got a good chance there. I put him up in the weekender, actually, for the Mandarin. I backed him each way. Um, so I think that was half a decent race uh, that day at Ludlow. He's dropped massively in the weights, hasn't he? Fantastic ass. He was rated up at 130 odd um, at his peak. He's now back down to 124. He's got a, a pound for that good run at Ludlow, and I think he's got his conditions. James Turner claiming off seven as well. So, yeah, fantastic ass, provided it goes ahead, Sam. Absolutely, yeah, Fantasticus has those two options. Whether that is just there in case Haydock does get called off, I'm not sure, but this is the preferred option here, Fantasticus for the race at Haydock. Uh, Johnny Pearson, who are you going to be with in this six-runner field? I'm not going to be with anyone in this six-runner oh, field. Right. <laughs> is it? I, went through the, I went through the race, and there's so many different cases I could make for, you know, all of, well, all by the, by the last horse in the letting, and it looks a bit too tricky to work out for myself. Obviously, you got the form of Fortescue behind Nassalam last time out, which has obviously mm. been very well franked with Nassalam winning the winning the Welsh National. East Street's been pretty impressive. Fantastic ass, obviously. We just heard a case for collector's item behind Animals, another good piece of form, and I'd rather watch it and see what happens. Not a problem at all. Yeah, Johnny Pearson leaving this race out, and always say with plenty of racing on Saturday and over the new year you don't have to have a bet on every race we always encourage responsible gambling here at the racing post and at unibet uh, i have to say it i believe that fortescue is coming for quite a bit of money and that fourth behind nasalam is certainly interesting going into this race i mean if conditions are the same as what they were at chepstow then uh fortescue if he does appreciate the heavy ground could go really well and win by a fair few lengths yeah, yeah. I looked at the definition of attritional in the uh, dictionary and it said, please see Saturday at Haydock around 1.25. Um, it will be an amazingly tough race, uh, named after the last fling, who we all hopefully remember back in 99, 2000, winning three races at Haydock. He ran plenty of times at the track, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times at the track, uh, placed a few times. But the last fling was a lovely uh, chestnut horse trained by the Smiths, and owned by Trevor Hemmings. And what do we find ourselves with a horse in this race? Well, we've got a horse that's trained by Sue Smith and owned by Trevor Hemmings or the late Trevor Hemmings group. And um, Eastry, I I looked at the last few runs. He's actually a quite lightly raced individual, which I also like when it comes to attritional staying chases. Because, they, you know, they after a while, I mean, Fortescue is probably a, an exception, but they do tend to kind of have run their races over two or three seasons and they can pop up. But so anyway, I like to go for lightly racing. East Street's had nine chases. He's had two wins, two seconds and three thirds. He's, uh, he's been placed or won 11 of his 14 races in total. Um, he loves heavy ground. He's, he's come first, second and third in his three attempts at, at heavy ground. He's had a third at Haydock. Uh, and last time, I don't know if any of the guys looked at the video, but um, he jumped the second last at Weatherby, or when, when, when he won at Weatherby, two runs ago, that might be, um, in joint last and um, seventh. And he and he just flew up the home straight and got up on the line. What made those interesting is they're over three miles. He's never raced over three and a half. And, and I know it, there is a bit of a... I mean, there's a big difference between three and three and a half, I know. But it looks on paper, and it, and it looks on film like he's gonna he's gonna enjoy the extra distance and he likes hey doc i wouldn't be surprised if they've the connections given the association with the last fling have had this race in mind for for a while um and i just looked at some of the oppositions a couple of the horses have never run on heavy going um fantasticus has won once on heavy going fortescue's second first and fourth uh the other horses um uh, the other horse, Omar, um, has only won once on heavy going. Um, I, ju I just thought the horse is going to love the going. He'll like the course. He'll probably, he'll probably enjoy, the, and we don't know, but he'll probably enjoy the distance. And connections have a strong connection to the race. So I thought at five to one, uh, well, thereabouts, East Street was was 
kind of a sensible bet in the race. But I, I agree with Jonathan. It was a competitive race. Collector's items won at Haydock in the past over hurdles. Looks, he looks like he's going to make a chaser. Fortescue ran a cracking race in the uh, the Welsh National Trial. When uh, funnily for him, he made the running, was prominent, then lost, and then came back. I remember I was there and I watched the race and by the by the about four strides after the line he was in he was in second um so he's definitely in four and Fortescue would have a chance plenty of other chances on the book but yeah i just i just that logic just suggested to me that east street was was worth a bet around about five to one even each way at five to one as well mm, east street yeah sounds like a bit of a plan to me there at haydock uh we go to taunton now like i say rarely go to taunton here on the postcast but we've got two races there the 210 is a uh, mayor's novices hurdle it's a listed contest over two miles where queen's gamble is our first odds on favorite and our only odds on favorite the postcast at five to six casa Nemento is two to one larchman lass is nine to one jaminska is 12 to one obsessed with you 16 to one and barbie girls is 80 to one Graham Robway, is this just as simple as the favourite should win this? No, I don't think it is, no. Ooh. I think that she'll get beat. Mm. Uh, oh, who by? She was sloppy on her hurdles debut when she won for Oliver Sherwood. Uh, she jumped better last time out at Kempton on her first run for Harry Derham, and maybe the you could argue the switch to a right-handed track suited her. But I like Casa uh, Nomento, who um, I thought was looked pretty flawless since she was switched to hurdles. She was a good bumper also herself, because, of course, Queen's Gamble was a really good bumper also as well. Mm. Uh, Casano Mento was second in that hot bumper they have um, just before Cheltenham at Sandown. Um, and she's gone on and pretty much won both hurdles in easy fashion, head in chest, without looking in any danger. I actually think that what's happened is Casano Mento's improved for the switch to hurdles, whereas Queen's Gamble, I think she's still got to prove that she's a natural jumper. So at the odds, I definitely would prefer Casa No Mento for me, Sam. Okay, I was going to go to Johnny then, but I'm going to go to Ed because Ed was nod- nodding a bit there with regards to what G Rob was saying. Ed, are you in a similar opinion there? Yeah, I agree with Graham. I'd be a Casa No Mento. Not, I mean. Queen's Gamble did very well, beat the boys and overcame the penalties when it came to. And I was there that day as well. We sponsored the uh, the Veterans Chase uh, uh, qualifier there um, and travelled really well, pinged the last, jumped and was running on at the end, but did come under pressure. Um, but I, I, Casa de Mento has won two from two over hurdles. But I, I know this has been the aim for the whole season. Uh, and I know that because of your excellent racing post comments. Um going there and viewers can go there themselves and Willie Twist and Davis said this this is the aim after it after she won at Hereford I think it was was it Hereford yeah Hereford yeah. Um, and it also said some really interesting quotes there that uh, no horse can they only had one horse that could go with I like to move it who unfortunately was fatally injured uh, recently uh, I like to move it, it was rated 157 won the Unibet Greatwood Hurdle six in the champion the Unibet champion hurdle um, and this was the only horse that could could work with it. Now that doesn't. We all know horses that go well at home and don't produce it on the track. But that's some statement. And he goes on to say in these quotes, he was very effusive. Uh, was uh, young Willie? He said he doesn't think there's an English mare that could go could, could go with this uh, with this with this filly or there. Um, so I mean, they 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 like her a lot. Um, and I. I was surprised that there was a, such a big difference in the betting between mm. the two. To be honest, I, I, I would be wouldn't be surprised if we see support for Casa Memento on the day as well. Um, and two to one, fifteen to eight. I'm 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 going to be back in there. I think, uh, as far as I can see, Hereford and Taunton are quite similar. You might be you might tell me they're different, but they look very similar to me. And you know, she's obviously got the speed, she's improved her hurdling, and this has been the plan. Um, and if I also remember rightly, Sam Twist and Davis goes here rather than anywhere else where the stable have runners. And we've already mentioned two or three horses that the stable have at, uh, at other venues, which would have a very good chance. Um, not sure if that's the only reason why he goes there, but uh, I think that's a strong indication of how well and how good they think this mare is. Okay, yeah, Castanamento, yeah, Sam Tristan Davies taking the ride there for his father, Nigel. So it'll be interesting to see how that horse there goes. And Johnny Pearson, seems like you're going to end up with a favourite. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> I don't I don't think there's a huge amount in it, but I'd always much rather be with Kempton form than I would Hereford form, as a general rule. 
and yeah, I know it's, I know it was a while back, but you go back to that uh, listed bumper at market raising in February. Form couldn't have worked out much better where she was second behind Dice Art Enos. She obviously beat the boys recently at Cheltenham. Yeah. Queen's Gambles obviously got and beaten the boys herself last time um, as well. And I, th- I just think that's that's the best form on offer. And I really do think she is the, she is the best mare in the race. No, it's not, a bu- it's not a bumper this, though, Johnny, is it? <laughs> it's not a bumper. It's not a bumper. I've got to jump some hurdles, hurdles here, mate. I, still, I still, <laughs> she's won her last two hurdles. So I wouldn't be that concerned about that one either. OK, look, Queen's uh, Gamble, so I yeah. Think, look, I, I, think, I think a few will look to take Queen's Gamble on, but you, like I say, it's going to be a, a match-up between the two. It's going to be very difficult, and as always, I'll sit on the fence and I'll have no opinion. Uh, we'll move on to the final race at Taunton that we're covering, the 2.45 there, which is a handicap hurdle over three miles. We've got five runners here. We're game winner, tops the market, 2 to 1. King of the Lake is 3 to 1. Hurricane Harvey uh, and Mocha Davassi are 9 to 2. And Bally Disco is 5 to 1. Johnny Pearson, you can uh, end us here with a winner. Who do you like in this final race that we're covering? I like game winner, but I think it's curious that they're switching back to back to um, hurdles haven't been running over mm. fences last twice well, the, the, the jumping could have been a bit slicker but I think he's actually run pretty well on both his last two starts cheap pieces are on so you know maybe they think he's just not fully concentrated in his races um, but yeah but for me that's the, that is the best form best form on offer for me and I think he's he's the most likely winner you know he's very lightly raced wasn't beaten that far. You know, King of the Lakes not run loads either, and Jeremy Scott's had a good season to date. But I think Harry Darren's going to have him bang ready, switching back to hurdles. Clearly, they think he's going to be better over hurdles and fences, and should be winning this race. And for me, he's, he's the winner. Yeah, game winner, current round two to one with Uni Bet. Not the, the worst bet in the world as a favourite here. Graham Robway, would you be with the favourite here, or a different, differing opinion? No, I like uh, the outsider of the field at the moment, Sam. I think um, he is Mocha Devassi. A mm. um, couple of runs ago at Exeter, I thought that uh, he was a bit unlucky not to be seriously involved in the finish. I'm not saying he would definitely have won without the mistake, but he made a, a quite a bad mistake at the third last, lost a lot of momentum, and then absolutely rocketed home to finish third behind all called Gosh How Posh. The gosh, our posh has come out and won again since off a four-pound higher mark. That form's pretty strong, I think. And um, uh, Mocha Devassi is only one pound higher than when uh, when he, I think he, he would have gone and, and run that horse very, very close that day without that mistake. Now, last time out, he turned up in a hot race at Cheltenham November meeting behind Buddy One. He was quite well fancied in that race. He was 10 to 1 for that. You know, and it was a real big field, competitive, proper Cheltenham race. I mean, this is what six runner field around Taunton. It's a little should be a little bit easier than that. So, I'm more than happy to forgive Mocha Devassi that below par run last time at Cheltenham. And if he can return to the form he showed uh, at Exeter behind that subsequent win of Goshia Posh, I think he, he should be going very close here off just one pound tyre. Sam. Okay, Mocha Devassi for Graham. Rob by then Ed Nixon. Who's to be your final selection on this week's postcast? Haven't got a strong selection here. Mm. I think of the uh, the quintet, any of the five could win. Uh, betting from two to one to five to one also just demonstrates how difficult the race is. But uh, yeah, I, I was going to go with game winner um, for very similar reasons already mentioned. Um, I'm also a great fan of Paul O'Brien. I think he's a really good mm. underrated jockey. Um, I know Nicky Henderson likes him a lot, and you would have seen how much he likes him because he put him on Lucia. When they won the big, uh, the big uh, Christmas handicap at, at Ascot, um, and I, I might be wrong here, but I just looked at Paul O'Brien's latest rides. He's had two wins and three seconds in his last five rides. I think that's right. That, I might have got that wrong, but he's in form. Um, the jockey's in form. The horse has been a little bit disappointing over fences, as previously mentioned. But um, yeah, I, I thought he, he was the most likely winner in what is a really competitive race. Okay, there we go. A couple of selections there for game. Winner and Ed mentioned earlier about the Racing Post comments. You can get access to them through the Racing Post Members Club. They're available on the Racing Post app now. Have a look at this. Members Club is now available on the Racing Post app. All Members Club subscribers can now access premium news and tips anytime, anywhere. Plus, if you're not already a member, you'll get 50% off your first three months. If you haven't already subscribed yet and want to join the greatest club in racing, simply visit racingpost.com forward slash subscribe. 
Welcome back to the final part of the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. You've still got Sam Hart, Graham Robb by Johnny Pearson and Ed Nicholson from Unibet, steering you through the action on ITV on Saturday. But we now steer attention to races elsewhere, as well as getting our best bets of the weekend. Ed, I'm going to come to you just for any offers over the weekend from Unibet before I get the other guys' other selections. What, what else can people get access to on Saturday morning? Well, first of all, it's great to go to uh, unibet.co.uk or at Unibet Racing to get the latest from Seven Barrows. Nicky Henderson's blogs will be free-flowing, um, as will Nico de Boinville. Um, obviously, plenty of interest in him at the moment with uh, with his rides, but also his injuries. So get the latest up-to-date information on Nico uh, through our um, blogs. Uh, extra place races throughout the course of the next few days will be available. Uh, we've got the money back second um, on this Saturday, uh, money back second or third will return um, for the uh, early part of next week as well for ITV Racing. So obviously Cheltenham New Year's Day fixture always a fantastic occasion, uh, plenty of races, uh, plenty of opportunities. There we go. Yeah, do check out the Unibet website for all the details and terms there. Like I say, we've got other action elsewhere over the period. We've actually got some good action on Sunday at Lingfield with some listed action. I'm not sure the gents will cover that, but Graham Robway New Year's Day action. There's plenty of that. What do we like over on the card this weekend? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cracking weekend, isn't it, Sam? Um, still working through those, those Sunday and Monday cards. I'll be tipping in the racing post this Sunday, so hopefully get a few more winners uh, for our members. The interesting race at Newbury on Saturday, 12.40, of course, is Jericho uh, de Repinay is turning up, uh, one of uh, Nicky Henderson's biggest type horses of the season, isn't he, without doubt, and he did look good first time out but he beat absolutely nothing didn't he king william rufus mm. was was second uh, a massive price and uh, uh i wasn't going to take him on but i just i just switched to, to the race and i see that huey morrison has declared secret squirrel to to to, to go against him and um clearly they're not running scared of him he was very, very impressive when he won at Kempton last time, Secret Squirrel. He absolutely cruised round and hosed up to win as he liked. Just as impressive, I thought, as Jericho de Repinay was when he beat absolutely nothing at Newbury on his uh, hurdles debut. And um, there's a massive price disparity between the two, Sam. Secret Squirrel also won two bumpers before that. So... I think he's got a serious chance of giving Jericho de Repinay, um a bit of a fright here. So, 12.40 on, at, uh, on Saturday at Newbury. Um, probably have a little bit on the Secret Squirrel to, um, what do they say, pull, pull um, Jericho de Repinay down a peg or two? Is that what they say? <laughs> yeah, Certainly, he's, he's got a big reputation, hasn't he? That we've, got, we've got to see whether he, can, uh, whether he can live up to it. There we go. Yeah, look, Jericho de Ripley is going to be a short price. But, yeah, looking at it, there are plenty of trains, especially Alan King as well, with uh, Paradas is, is not running scared either. So Secret Squirrel would be the one to take on Jericho de Ripley for Graham Robway. Johnny Pearson, what else are you looking forward to? Is there, there's more actions come in Ireland, I believe? Uh, I've got a, I've got a few, few horses I like look at, actually. Uh, another one at Taunton tomorrow is in the 135, uh, Hard Frost. Again, for the team of Harry Derham and Paul O'Brien, was you know ran pretty well last time on seasonal on seasonal reappearance on um, what looked an inadequate trip. I mean, going over further here should be a massive positive, and I think he can uh, he can go one one better and get his head in front. Okay, Hard then, what time is that? Sorry, that is in the, the one thirty-five at Taunton. Taunton. yeah. And then on on New Year's Day, there's a few few interesting horses and, and races, and starting with. Cheltenham in the in the twelve fifty five. What looks a very competitive novice chase. You know you've got winners who've been winning well. So I really like the look of Liberty Hunter for mm. Evan Williams if he if he goes there and, and runs. You know, it's very running, travelling as well as anything when falling at Chepstow. I think it was three out, and then went and won as easily as he liked at Wincanton. You know quite fairly recently, and I think he could he could have a much bigger future ahead of him and then in the in the 205 if running stage star is potentially turning up again and you know for for my for what it's worth i think you know he's a he's a real ryan air horse and should be much too good for the rest of this field yeah. even even at the weights you know carrying a lot more weight but he's just should be far too good for the rest of them there and then 
over in Ferry House, we've got Allegri Davassi, who was, of course, disappointing in the mayor's chase at um, at Cheltenham in the festival, but you know, returned at Cromwell in, in November, winning very impressively on the same card that Alaho reappeared in. And on the times, the, the race was much better than that. And I think she, she's got a future ahead of her still, even though disappointed a couple of times. OK, there we go. A few to look out for over the, the weekend, obviously going into New Year's Day on Monday as well. I mean, on Sunday, I'll be looking forward to the 154, the Quebec Stakes, a listed race. I'd like the look of Tyrinthian C <laughs> for Roger Varian there, who split Blue Trail and Forest of Dean at Lingfield last time. I think this horse is in really good form, loves Lingfield. Uh, got a lovely draw in stall six. Um, I've got a feeling with Jack Mitchell on board, that horse is going to go close in the 154 on Sunday on the all weather. Right, it's time for the naps then, the best bets of the weekend. And Ed Nicholson's going to kick us off with his nap this week. Who's the best bet going into the weekend? Go for a, a horse with a price. Could go for a few short price horses, but um, one of the most competitive races <laughs> of uh, of the day, I'm going to go my nap in. Uh, the Mandarin Chase, 225 at Newbury. 12 runners at present. Um, bow to greatness. I just thought had the profile of a horse that could go well at a, a decent price and also being nibbled at in the market, which um, I thought was of interest given it's his first run of the season, 259 days since we last seen him, saw him run probably one of his best races at Aintree. Um, he goes well when fresh. has got some good form um, last season. Only doubt, only slight doubt was the trainer form. But, you know, given that there's been support for him, I thought bow to greatness around about seven, eight to one was a, a fair bet with the extra places as well on offer. Okay, bow to greatness in the Mandarin. For oh, each Ed way. Yeah. I'm going to go each way. You're going to go each way. All right. Uh, so Ed Nixon's with bow to greatness. Graham, Rob, who's the nap this weekend? Yeah, I, I really fancy Golden Sun in the 335 mm. at Newbury with that tongue tie back on, Sam. I think you're going to see... Uh, totally different horse, and I think you're looking at a graded horse in a handicap. So, Golden Sun, 335 Newbury. Be very disappointed if he doesn't win. Yeah, Golden Sun for Graham Robway in the last at Newbury. Johnny Pearson, your nap? It's going to be Captain Teague in the in the 3 o'clock, the Chalet Hurdle. I think he's going to prove himself to be much better than the rest of the field. There you go, Captain T. I think we can all agree on this one. The one that we, oh, we're not going to agree on is my nap because we had three different selections in it. In the 115, I'm going to be with the Russian Doyen for the Jeremy Scott Yard, Harry Cobden, hoping he has a really good day, actually, uh, on Saturday. But this horse here came off the track after 621-day layoff, was fourth behind Elixir de Nuts and Master Chewy. Now, Master Chewy won in really good style at Kemp's over Christmas. And Elixir de Nuts actually looked like he was going to go and win um, the Desert Orchid Chase to beat uh, Editor de Jeep, but jumping just didn't stay. The uh, Editor de Jeep just out jumped Elixir de Nuts that day. But look, the form's looking really good. This horse is definitely going to improve. Loves Newbury. Probably going to want a little bit of juice in the ground, hoping there's a small bit of rain. But that will do for me. The Russian Doyen around 9 to 2 with Unibet. So there are the weekend naps. Hopefully, a lucky 15 that will come in for a few of our viewers and listeners. Now, I've just quickly got to spin through what are the New Year's plans for everyone? Graham Robway, what's the big plans for New Year's Eve? You got much on? Uh, yeah, we're having a few people over on New Year's Eve, Sam, because we've just moved house, you see. So we're in a little bit of a combined New Year's Eve and uh, housewarming party oh, lovely. Uh, on New Year's Eve. But because obviously we're all we're all sort of getting up there in age now you know we're doing you know we're only doing sort of afternoon early evening thing probably be tucked up in bed by midnight we'll have a pretend midnight about eight o'clock Sam you know <laughs> but no it should be it should be a great night looking forward to the new year another great year's racing coming our way Sam so can't wait to get stuck into it okay yeah big happy new year to you Mr Rodway Johnny Pearson what are the plans for you uh, just sort of celebrate with a few friends. Nothing, nothing to you, mad. I'm fairly sure I'm working on the first, so got to got to keep myself in check. You know, yeah. can't go too heavy or anything like that. Yeah, you've got to be sensible if you're working the next day. That's true. I'm not, so I'm going to go out for a few drinks on New Year's <laughs> Eve. Um, yeah, happy New Year to you, Mr. Pearson and Ed Nicholson. What are the plans for you? Are you going to be racing on New Year's Day as well? Uh, possibly. It's very quiet uh, New Year's Eve. Definitely won't be uh, won't be consumed with alcohol or partying. That's for sure. Um, may go to Cheltenham on New Year's Day. Um, it was so packed last year. It took. I missed the first two races because it was so packed. 
So, and I left before the first, last two races. So I only watched two races. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm going to make the long journey, um, down, but, um, if not, I'll be watching it on TV. That's for sure. But, uh, it's now one of the most popular meetings I have at show. And I used to go with my dad in the 1980s. Do you remember Corporal Klinger always used to win the new year's day hurdle. Do you remember those? Um, and, um, no one was there. I mean, literally no one was there. And now it's, I think it's their, the outside of the festival, it's their, their busiest day. So, yeah, great, great occasion if you're near Cheltenham, but to travel all that way and only see two races, I'll probably give it a miss. There we go. Yeah, it'll be one for resting up on New Year's Day, preparing yourself for the rest of the new year. Big happy new year to you as well, Mr. Nixon. A big happy new year to all our viewers and listeners. We're going to be back again next Friday with a preview. We'll be previewing an excellent looking Univet card at Sandown for next Saturday. Looking forward to that and we'll hear plenty from Ed about the veterans race as well. Um, it's going to be a great card and I'm looking forward to attending that next Saturday. It's going to be my first time on a race course in the new year so can't wait for that. So like I say a yeah, big happy new year to everyone. Do as always like, comment, share and subscribe. Go to unibet.co.uk. Check out all the offers, terms and conditions there for anything for Saturday's racing. We will see you again next Friday around 5pm. Thanks for watching.